This is Motor Merc to Mission Control, initiating pre-flight check and requesting departure clearance. Jazzer 1, I'm sorry, sir, request the kill. Five golf mic, uh, actually, I'm in altitude, descend to maintain 1-1000. One, Cleared for takeoff. Army 72010, What's up, everybody? This is Motor Merc coming to you from beautiful Southern California. Going out on a bit of an adventure today. Gonna be meeting a friend for lunch at a place called Dog House, which is sort of like a, a foodie version of a hot dog joint. It's like upscale artisanal hot dog shop. It started out as a single location. I discovered it in Pasadena and uh, turns out they've been very successful I suppose so they're expanding and now they're a chain and there's one that's actually closer to me here in the San Fernando Valley so I'm gonna go check it out see if it's as good as the original have me some lunch with my buddy so yeah anyways I'm really happy to be taking the 250 out today because I feel like having a little bit of uh, rambunctious fun today and the thing about smaller bikes is that they're always a little bit, uh, they got a different feel to them. They feel a little more, I don't know, I don't want to say raw because that's not exactly right. You can have a, a raw good time on a big bike too. But there's something about small bikes that's like, they're just perky and small and light and fun. I've talked about that in the video before. Uh, they're just like, they're, they're so small and nimble and light and, you, you know, you can like fit them through places you can't fit bigger bikes and they're just, it's a different experience. I really like being on a small bike sometimes. You just feel like you're having, it's, it's more of a carefree kind of a fun. It's also partly because this bike is like worth maybe $500. It's a, an older Ninja 250 that barely runs. Like I wouldn't trust it to go more than 5 or 10 miles from my house. Some place that I could get a cheap tow home from because... I expect it to break down any day now. But in the meantime, you know, for short little rides, it's actually a ton of fun. It's the kind of bike you don't mind, like, riding over some dirt, going over some bumps. Like, I've been watching uh, one of my favorite vloggers recently is Suburban Delinquent, Sub D. And he goes on all these rides, uh, I don't know what to call them, group rides, but he goes out riding with a couple of buddies, one of which is... Uh, his friend Crazy Klaus and if you've seen any of these videos with Crazy Klaus in them the kind of abuse he puts his bikes through <laughs> like if you had a, a cherished beloved expensive sport bike or cruiser or touring bike you wouldn't have that particular flavor of fun that Crazy Klaus has with your expensive beloved bike you need like a beater bike that you can like take those kind of risks with and have that kind of fun with so for me, that's what this bike is. Like, I could jump a curb on this bike and it's gonna like wreck the bike up, but I don't care that much because the whole damn bike is already basically written off in my head. It's like a junk bike. It runs and that's all I can ask of it. It runs and the brakes work, so I guess that's sort of an important. But like, honestly, I don't even care if it gets stolen. I mean, it would suck. I wouldn't be happy if it got stolen, but I also wouldn't mind that much. I mean, to be honest, whoever steals this bike from me is probably saving me <laughs> saving me the trouble of figuring out what to do with it when it finally stops running. Sometimes, you know, I, I want to go out on a ride and I decide, yeah, even though I'd really like to take this bike, I choose the other one just because I don't want to get stranded. And then there's that uh, little adventurous part of my mind, the part that makes me want to go out and, like, seek challenges in my life like I would love to see what happens if I just jumped on this bike and tried to take it all the way up. like do the, the Cali Coast series that I did try that on this bike see how it goes yeah my guess is it would actually probably make it but there's a risk that I get all the way up to Napa and it breaks down there and then what am I gonna do I'm not gonna tow it 600 miles back home man I don't care what anybody says this bike is fun my big kid ninja has got probably three or four times the horsepower, but I don't care. This one's just got that little je ne sais quoi that big bikes don't have. I love it. I love it. Here we are, the dog house. Woodland Hills branch. And have us some artisanally hot, hot doggies. <laughs> Prepare for the worst. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more, doghouse. 
So far today I had trouble with my bike and I left my lav mic on while eating lunch as usual. So let's see if today is a day of threes. Hopefully my bike will start and not be the third mishap of the day. Oh yeah. The power. Something weird you might not know about the San Fernando Valley is that it's actually specifically designed to prevent people from doing stuff like using uh, Waze. If you don't know what Waze is, Waze is a mapping app, like a traffic navigation app that looks at the traffic situation and tries to figure out faster ways for you to get where you're going, including using side streets and crap, which of course people who live in these little neighborhoods would hate because they don't want all that traffic and aggressive impatient drivers like being funneled onto their little back, peaceful back, back roads and stuff. So uh, when the San Fernando Valley was designed, all these little neighborhoods with houses and stuff, uh, well, not all of them, obviously, because I'm taking advantage of a, of a case where you can use the back roads, but most of them were designed with cul-de-sacs and little weird loops so that if you try and take advantage of somebody's neighborhood to get around one of these big thoroughfares that's clogged with traffic, you kind of get stuck and they just spit you right back out. All right, well, lunch was good. This location is confirmed to be as good as the original, or at least the original one that I discovered back in the day. Food is good, high quality, tasty, not cheap though. Lunch cost me 20 bucks. Although that's partially because I ended up buying two hot dogs and a chili cheese tater tots, which was in my opinion worth it, absolutely delicious. I can never pick just one hot dog from this place when I go to visit because all of the different ingredients that they put on there are so good and it's hard to pick what I want out of the options that they have. They have so many options. So I got this one that's called the Scott Bayoli, which is like a, an aioli covered hot dog with bacon and caramelized onions and some other stuff I can't remember. And then they had one called the Pig Lebowski, which is like a kielbasa dog with, uh, whatchamacallit, coleslaw and barbecue sauce and other stuff on it, on there. Is this gonna work out? Yeah. <laughs> I must say I'm very pleased with what I had. It was a good lunch and it's good to see my buddy and hang out a little bit. My friend and his fiance and yeah it was a good day. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tagging along and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.